Nah, we ain't playing that. Man, look at the boy playing checkers. <laughs> checkers? Yeah, checkers. <laughs> Yo, why y'all playing checkers on the chess set? Playing each piece like losing it hurts. This ain't checkers. The industry around the game of chess, more than a millennium old, at around $190 million. A 2012 survey found that some 605 million people in the world still play chess on a regular basis. While the rules were a little bit different and the pieces had different names, there were people playing a game that you would recognize as chess some 1,500 years ago. Life is a chessboard where each of our actions is a move. If our moves are good, intelligent, and timely, the result will be success, health, and longevity. If, on the other hand, our moves are in bad faith, selfish, and mistimed, the result will be failure, sickness, and death. Samuel on Wior. Chess is a sport, a scientific sport, a game of the mind, decision making, game theory, and tact. But there are parallels to the game of chess and the game of life. Some may say it's an exact replica of the game we all play. 28 squares outlining the chessboard as there are 28 lunar mansions making up our monthly cycles. Cornelius Agrippa says, In these 28 mansions do lie hid many secrets of the wisdom of the ancients, by which they wrought wonders on all things which are under the circle of the moon. In Arabic astrology, which is the major influence on traditional European astrology, there are 28 mansions. The moon controls the ebbs and flows of our world, the feminine principle. Think for a second about the word money. Rephrase it to moon I. Then relate it back to the quote, money makes the world go round. The moon controls the ocean's currents. Humans use currency to interact with each other. In chess, as in life, there are various currencies or monies to be had. There's physical, mental, and spiritual currencies within our realm, and it's shown within the value of the chess pieces. Players of all levels of enlightenment are on the board, yet all still guided by a higher, unknowable force, the hidden hand, even the king. Every chess move or decision you make is energy in action. I see in the battle of chess an astonishingly accurate model of human life, with its daily grind, its crises, and its ceaseless ups and downs. G. Kasparov. Kasparov's words hold firm. Chess is the model of human life. There is still some uncertainty about the exact origins of chess. Some stories seem to be legendary. One says that the chess's first ancestor was invented by a Chinese commander named Hong Qin during the Warring States period of ancient China in 200 BC. Other references to the game, which was called the Elephant Game, exist as well, but it isn't clear if Qin invented any kind of game at all, what the rules were, or what relationship it has either to modern chess or the modern Chinese gang of Zhongqi, also called Chinese chess. Another story comes from India, which suggests that chess was invented by a wise minister to chastise a tyrant Indian king. The story says the wise men wished to convince the king that everyone in his kingdom had value, and so invented the game of chess with pieces that supported the king in various ways. William Shakespeare sums up the characters of life much like one can sum up the unique pieces on a chessboard. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages. All of the pieces went through different names in different regions, and some were called Marquis or Count or Rector. You want my king. You got to come get my king. All these other pieces are just a means to do it. All right. What about them little bald-headed bitches right there? All right. These right here. These are the pawns. They like the soldiers. Each side has eight pawns. The pawns have to go seven straight spaces to reach enlightenment, much like their acts being seven ages. Usually seen as the lower peasants, the pawns must utilize all their senses to survive the game. They may only move forward one space at a time, but when capturing an opponent, they are allowed to move diagonal one space. It can never move back. They move like this, one space forward only, except when they fight. And it's like, like this. And they like the front lines, they be out in the field. This diagonal movement esoterically represents the flash of spiritual power each pawn has within itself to conquer their goals. After reaching the other side of the game board, 
the pawn will be crowned and exchanged for another piece of greater movement and value. Everything stay who he is, except for the pawns. Now for pawn, made it all the way down to the other dude's side, you get to be queen. Which teaches us esoterically the value of perseverance and the ability to overcome obstacles in our path. Seven is divine because at seven, you've reached the pinnacle. Seven chakras, truly the divine, holy, spiritual sense of all things. Seven is the absolute. Nothing greater comes after seven. Once the pawn reaches the seventh space, it morphs to only go back plane within the confines of the same realm. Nothing is greater than what is. The pawns, man, in the game, they get capped quick. They be out the game early. Unless they some smart ass pawns. It's the queen. She smart, she fierce. She move any way she want, as far as she want. And she is the go get shit done piece. And like I said, the queen ain't no bitch. She got all the moves. On the chessboard of life and in the game of chess, the feminine element cannot be absent. The universal principle of life which shines in every creation. God himself is the king unfolded in women. The eternal love, the ebbs and flows of all creation. As her children, we long for her tenderness because she is the other half of our being. Without the queen in the game of chess, we feel lost without her supreme power. The liberty of movement of the queen on the chessboard shows her importance in the game as well in life. Thanks to her moves, we can lose or win in the game. The queen is the moon. Every time you make a good run at me, I just threaten your queen and back you go. You treat her like she's the last lady on earth. The queen is just a pawn with a lot of fancy moves, nothing more. See this? This the kingpin, all right? And he the man. You get the other dude's king, you got the game. But he's trying to get your king too, so you got protected. Now the king, he move one space, any direction he damn choose, because he's the king. Like this, 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 all right? But he ain't got no hustle. But the rest of these motherfuckers on the team, they got his back. And they run so deep, he really ain't got to do shit. The king is the sun and the spirit. Kings can only move one square at a time, but in any direction. The king symbolizes wisdom, the hierarch, our real being. The inner master, the inner star that has always smiled upon us. The whole game of chess consists in getting the king into such a position that he cannot move. It is only then that he is put to death or checkmate, which equals 33 in reduction, much like there's 33 degrees in Freemasonry. We know that once a game of chess is over, you can start another one, but the king is still the king. He does not change. He is our real being. He is what was, what is, and what will be. We are all the kings in our unique game of chess, and it is the goal to protect ourselves from the opposing forces looking to suppress the spirit inside us all. One of the fundamental values of chess is time. That is, speed in carrying out the strategy of the game, in time and space, and avoiding errors. Put the clock on, put the show on speed, I chew his ass right up. I chew all the asses up. All them grandmasters, them, them Europeans with their government subsidies and whatnot to sit on their asses and play all day. They ain't living in the world. Put the clock on them. Put the heat on their backs, they break down. Put them in the park fishing for dollars and they break. So also in life, we are confronted with innumerable problems and each person needs to know how to solve them intelligently. The chessboard is the world. The pieces are the phenomena of the universe. The rules of the game are what we call the laws of nature. Thomas Henry Huxley. Join my Patreon today for only $5 to receive a monthly esoteric documentary on your favorite sports athletes and events. Real, raw, uncut, and uncensored without the limitations of YouTube. Join today to see the other side of the sports world.